Hey guys, Tyler Mahoney here with my good buddy David Ryan for Truman Lake Fishing Intel. We are doing this video just a few days ahead of the upcoming Toyota series and there's actually quite a few tournaments going on, bass tournaments this weekend, so this is going to be great information whether you're in the Toyota series or in one of these other tournaments or just fishing the lake in general, trying to catch a nice big old bass here over the next several weeks. Um, David has a custom bait company, Dave's Custom Baits. Um, they uh he specializes in making these balsa crankbaits square bill crankbaits he does a, a ton of custom paint jobs as well um this is a basically mimicking what what's the old bait that the, you're trying it's called he calls it the black market balsa yeah and so uh bagley's in in the early 70s came out with a a balsa b and they had a balsa b1 b2 b3 and actually a b4 <clears throat> And uh, the B4 was a little bit different body, and it didn't quite do the things that the 1, 2, and the 3 did. But uh, I've been able to make, a, I call mine a small, medium, large, and this is the double XL. That's the big guy. That's the 2-ounce bait. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was uh, kind of emulates that old, that old Bagley. Yeah. Well, and David is going to be competing in the Toyota Series. There's going to be... A lot of big names in that. David has done really well in Truman Lake with these types of baits. And that's what we're going to talk about with you in this video is how do you throw these, under what conditions, what colors, um, a little bit about how the lake's been fishing as well. And so uh, with that, David, I was just going to have you break down these baits, how you're going to be utilizing them um, here in the coming week and over the next several weeks mm -hmm. into October. Okay, so to jump right in... Um, People call them square bills, people call them balsa baits, people call them bees. Uh, we're all talking about uh, a balsa square build crankbait. Um, I particularly throw mine on 20 pound monofilament and I'm a very big proponent of that. It, uh, it helps the action of the bait. Even my B1 or small size, I will still throw that heavy line because these baits are actually designed to run with that heavy line. If you try to downscale, throw it on 12 or something like that, because most, no, I mean, most people who aren't familiar with this, and this is kind of a cult following here in the Midwest, mm -hmm. because you take this technique out east and it's totally foreign to them. I've had several people buy baits from out east and then call me and go, hey Dave, you know, the bait's kind of running weird. And the very first thing I do is ask them, you know, what pound test are you throwing? Yeah. Well, they're always throwing too light a line. And so the square bill isn't made to dive deep. And whenever you put light line on it, it's wanting to dive deeper than what its normal functioning water column is supposed to be. So we keep that in the first third, or I say first third, one to three feet. Sometimes on the long cast, you can get four feet out of out of a, a B3 or a large size. Uh, and then obviously the double XL. This one, this one actually gets down to about eight feet uh, on a long cast, and and then holding the rod at the correct angle. Yeah. But um, so we're going to jump in and say, okay, when do I throw my when do I throw my little guy? When do I throw my medium sized bait? When do I throw my large bait? And and it's all predicated on size of bait. Um, I like to I like to look at, you know, a lot of people say match the hatch. Well, if I if they're feeding on small thread fins, then obviously uh, the B one or the small size is going to be your ticket. If you're feeding on, let's say, a medium-sized thread fin, uh, this this medium or a B2 size is what people refer to it as. It's been the standard uh, as far as bite ratio. You're not going to catch a whole lot of big fish on it. You can catch a four or five pounder on it, but your typical size that bite this bait is anywhere from a two and a half to a four pounder. Uh, that's that's really what what, and you'll you'll get a lot. Of bites on that size bait and then whenever you jump to the b3 or the large size bait you know now we're talking a, a mature thread fin uh, a baby gizzard uh, that's what this is and and those are just absolutely 
essential for bass. Yeah. I mean, those are those are Scooby snacks for the bass. Yeah, yeah. There's no doubt. <clears throat> I myself, this is my guy. I'm a I'm a large. I'm a B3 guy. This is this is what I throw probably eighty percent, eighty five percent of the time. Um, it's just for the simple fact of all the fish I've caught over six pounds on all of my balsa baits have always been on a large. Mm -hmm. I've never caught a six pounder even randomly on a small or a medium. Um, so this is my go-to. Um, and then whenever, and th this is real specific, the double XL I made because I've never seen anything quite like it on the market and I wanted to push the envelope and you can see the size difference between a, a yeah. large or a B3 and my double XL. I mean, it's significant. Um, some other companies try to come out with big baits, uh, and they're, uh, they're not that big. So in the fall, later than, later than September, I mean, this is a technique late October, first part of November, when the big gizzard shad, the hand sized gizzard shad start getting up on, mm -hmm. on the rocks and eating the algae. Yeah. This is a great technique for that then. Um, as far as the, the cover that I like to look for, uh, any horizontal cover, uh, obviously that's a, that's a no brainer, uh, flat bank lay down. Uh, those are, those are what stand out. The other cover that you want to look for is any type of,